I'm Sherry Russell from mining.com.au and joining me today is Fraser Tabiat, the Managing Director for Alma Metals. Fraser, once again, it's great to see you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Shay, how are you? Great to be back. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you on because today is a free geology lesson for anybody interested in copper exploration and porphyries, which is a little bit mysterious to most people who don't know what they are. But first and foremost, we're going to start with a bit of your background and how you became uh, how you became sort of a specialist in porphyries. Now, I believe that you started your career out well, early in your career with Western Mines Corporation. Tell me, how did that lead to this interest in porphyries? Yeah, I, I was very fortunate. I, I emigrated from the UK for uh, you know, with the help of WMC Resources and spent. Uh, after the first four years working in uh, Kalgoorlie on gold and nickel, um, you know, they gave me the chance to go to the Philippines and start work on uh, porphyry copper deposits. So, yeah, I did a lot of work around the Tampak and Discovery, which was, you know, is still one of the largest um, known copper and gold occurrences in the world. Um, so I got to see a lot of that in the field. Um, and obviously spent a lot of time with the WMC geologists uh, at Tampak and, and, and other parts of the world that had plenty of experience. So I absorbed a lot from those guys. Um, and then I was given a, a wonderful opportunity where I was given, um, you know, free reign to go and visit a lot of porphyry copper deposits and talk to research institutions, universities, go on field trips and, and, you know, and learn that art. Um, and then, you know, work with the team in WMC to sort of reevaluate global prospectivity for porphyry coppers. And, um, you know, it was just a wonderful opportunity, great exposure to a lot of very, very smart people. And I was sort of able to, you know, try and, pull that all together and you know, inform my own opinions on how these things form and, and where to find them. Uh, it is an incredible opportunity that you were given, which means you are the perfect person, as far as I'm concerned, to talk us through what is a porphyry, because people will see this come up in investor statements about what a porphyry is. But let's be honest, retail investors don't often know what that even means. Yeah. So, the, you know, and, and, the, and the reason we discuss, you know, porphyries is because they, you know, they produce about 70% of the world's copper. So they're a very important deposit type. Um, but basically, you know, in a nutshell, a porphyry copper deposit is, if I can describe it, it's generally a very large uh, but low-grade deposit that has uh, combinations and permutations of copper, gold, and molybdenum. Um, and the reason they're called porphyry deposits is they are generally associated with felsic intrusive rocks with a porphyritic texture, which basically just means they've got some large crystals of quartz and feldspar and a fine grain, grain mass. So it's quite a visually distinct rock type, um, and they're almost always present in these very large, low-grade deposits. Uh, and you get a characteristic stock work of quartz veins, which contains the, uh, the copper generally in the form of chalcopyrite. So when you see one, you know you've seen one. They're, they're, they're fairly um, fairly easy to detect. So where are they formed then? So actually, well, they basically form underneath strata volcanoes. Um, so they form in you know these large arcs of magmatic belts, you know, t characterized by volcanoes. So the, you know one of the biggest examples is the American Cordillera, which stretches all the way from Alaska through Canada, the U.S., Mexico, and then down into sort of uh, you know, South, South America, you know, Chile, Peru, etc. So that's the, one of the biggest arcs. Um, yeah, and, you know, a nice little snippet of information here. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines in the early 1990s, it was probably forming a porphyry copper underneath it because when they measured the uh, material that was ejected, it was full of um, sulfate, which is a, an important part of the process, and quite elevated levels of copper. So it was probably forming a porphyry copper Unfortunately, it blew it all into the atmosphere, so it spread a lot of copper and sulphate all over the place. That's where they form. They form at depths of two to five kilometres below these volcanoes. All right, that is absolutely incredible, but sort of where are we more likely to see porphyries? Yeah, so what we do you know, as, as a geologist um, you know, is, is we look at the geological map and we look for belts of volcanic rocks, uh, particularly those that have got uh, a certain style of intrusive rocks going into them. Um, and that allows us to then, you know, make some deductions about, yeah, yes, this belt of volcanic rocks formed above a subduction zone. You know, so these are where, you know, the, the, the Earth's tectonic plates are being, you know, subducted below another one. What happens there is the, uh, the upper mantle, the, the sort of the wedge between the subducting plate and the crust starts to partially melt. And that's where you actually take the initial 
batch of, uh, of magma that produces these things. So that's a critical thing. So we map those sort of arcs out, and then we can start exploring within those arcs and looking for evidence of the actual mineralization itself. Given everything you've just described, Fraser, why do mining companies go looking for porphyry deposits? Yeah, so the, I mean, as I said, you know, that they, they do form about 70% of global copper production. So they're an incredibly important uh, style of, of deposit for, for that copper market. Uh, the other thing is they're physically very large. Um, you know, so they can have surface footprints that are enormous. I mean, if we look at the, um, the Chuquicamada deposit in um, South America, in, in, uh, in Chile, you know, the, the open pit there is well over five kilometres long. It's a kilometre deep, um, probably two, three kilometres wide. So, yeah, uh, the, these deposits have enormous footprints. I mean, the, the alteration halo at Tampac and covered 100 square kilometres. Now, that makes them generally a little bit easier to find, particularly if you're looking under cover. You know, as we talked about earlier, you know, the modern exploration has to now start looking under cover because most of the exposed deposits have been found. Uh, and so rather than necessarily discovering the deposit with the first drill hole, if you can hit the the alteration halo and then use some clever science to zoom in on the focal point, um, you've got a much better chance of making a discovery than you otherwise would. Uh, listen, Fraser, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for breaking down the basics of a porphyrin for everybody listening today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to see you next time. Sounds good. See you then.